Hey guys, James Mansfield here from RuPaul's Drag Race Season 9. I'm here to show you my pink fantasy look. I'm gonna take you from this Whoa. to this. First things first, I'm gonna color correct. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of a corally orange and just tap that onto anywhere facial hair grows. If you're a female, generally you don't have to worry about this, but if you are a drag queen, you usually are men with facial hair, so you wanna pick something that's going to mask under the light. So if you ever go look at a color chart, oranges and reds neutralize blues, which is how your facial hair is gonna look underneath the light. So you wanna make sure you don't have a big old beard sticking out. We don't wanna look like Willem today. Taking it downwards towards the chin area too because hair grows there as well and once I start contouring, you're gonna see my double chin a little less. Now I'm going to set this. I am using an orange setting powder. I usually use one of these guys and just tap off my excess and pat it on. Be cautious of all the little dust particles going around so as not to give yourself the whooping cough. When I first started doing my makeup, I used to really, really over-exaggerate all of my features. I used to just erase everything that was there. And going forward with my drag, I decided I wanted to embrace what I was given naturally and exaggerate where it's needed. Because after a while, I was just overpainting on like a clown mask and I never really felt like an, my authentic self. I decided to do what was best for the character and sit down and really focus on what kind of face do you want to do. And I've always been inspired by those 90s drag queens that uh, use their real features to adapt into their makeup to create the most like an actual woman you could look like. And that's the direction I decided to take the character. I wanted her to be like a Pee Wee Herman or an Elvira. She's a character comedian. Foundation. With the beard area, you want to be very cautious because if you swipe too much, you're going to remove all of that correction you just did. And you're going to have like patches in your face. You know, like you have like a skin condition. I'm usually very, very liberal with the amount on the bottom of the face because I want as much coverage here as possible. And since I am an oily type, when it gets to the forehead, I'm going to use a little less because then my oils will fight through it and break it down as I'm performing through the night. I just usually do a very small amount here and just small strokes because I'm gonna use a blender to blend that all out. Taking a damp blender, I'm just going to spread all of that out. For me, I use the beauty blender because I feel like it gives me the smoothest application as far as foundations go. I know a lot of people use them for just about everything on the face. But for me, I feel like it gives me that nice poreless effect. I use a translucent powder. I can't really use pigments because I use lots of blondes whenever I perform. And blonde hair always picks up pigment. And it's a bitch to clean out of the lace. So I'm always super cautious about like what color contours and what color setting powders I can use. All right, once your face is set, time to move on to contouring. I am using a color they describe as fawn, which is like a grayish brown. I use very light contours as opposed to a very dark one. I use the flat surface. You can use a credit card, a gift card. I'm using like an old name badge from one of my old jobs. That nice laminated plastic really helps to cut a cheek. For my looks, I like to go a bit softer. If I were performing on a very dark venue, I would be using a cream as well, but for this, I'm just gonna use a powder because it gives you that nice, soft airbrushed effect as opposed to a cream where it gets really, really dark. And like I said before, I wear a lot of blonde hair and that really screws up the contrast of your lace when you have to blend it. So I'm always about finding a shortcut for a look. I don't know why I do this. I just feel like I've seen drag queens do this forever and I just like the way it looks. I think it's supposed to like make my temples seem more feminized, but if anything, I'm just making my forehead seem smaller. That's my biggest concern. Because women have nice, small, delicate features. Just blending that outward. With drag and female illusion makeup, it's all round. And like here, I have a very cut jawline, so I'm softening that up and just creating an oval effect here. The mistake I think people make most often with their contour is that they go down too far, especially in like real life contour makeup. People often don't measure out where their cheekbones go. So if you're doing your contour on your cheekbone, 
it would be about here is where my cheekbone stops. That's where my contour should end. Another good method to think about is, think about it as a three. You're making a three on your face, so loop, loop, and loop. I like my nose to be very snatched in, even though I kind of have a small nose to begin with. I start from the brow and I bring it down, and you bring it underneath the tip of the nose as well. Focusing mostly on this light here is where I want to focus on, because that's where we're gonna get the contour from. A common mistake people do is they contour their natural nose shape, so they have like a fat nose, which isn't contouring anything. You're just essentially just making your nose seem wider. Unless that was your goal, but generally you want to thin it out. So I'm going to focus on bringing the darkness inward. And I usually like to take it from like Glenn Close to Latoya Jackson really quickly. All right, let's start highlighting. Taking a lighter banana color for me since I'm a deeper set skin tone. I'm just going to pat that onto my cheeks. And highlighting is another thing you have to really be cautious of because you can really make your face too wide with it. It's very easy to over highlight. For me, I like to really focus emphasis in the center of the face to make it nice and small. As a drag queen of color, finding my correct skin shade was always the most difficult thing for me. You spend the most time trying to find a foundation. If I could recommend anything for anyone to try and do first, find the color that matches you. Because I was walking around with what I call a mask, where you could see where my foundation ended from where my contour began. <laughs> and also, figuring out your highlights and contours that match your skin tone best. It's very easy to get into a color that's far too dark for your face. Generally, if you are a Latino like me, browns, tans, and very, very deep, Shades of earthy browns are the best for contour. For highlights, you wanna go more towards very ivories for your bright cut highlights and bananas for your softer highlights. Highlighting is always the most fun because I always feel like I look like an extra in The Lion King. I squint my forehead like that and I just do a circle. Look at that. It's like the sun is setting on my forehead. We're gonna pick a little small brush like that. Usually these little flat Narrow brushes work well. Do a little button dot here and slowly bring it upward. And this one, if you screw it up, don't worry. You can just sweep it away and contour again. There we go. Now we're gonna move on to eyes. What I'm doing here is I'm creating a skeleton of where my crease is going. And I exaggerate about maybe a half inch from my actual crease. My actual crease is here. So that just won't do for a drag queen. And connect it with the nose contour and blend it with the tip of the brow. Now I used to block out my brows, but after a period of time I decided I didn't want to do it anymore. I decided I'm just gonna sacrifice, you know, getting boyfriends and getting trade in actual life and have, you know, small, nubby, crazy people eyebrows. For the sake of my drag, I'm that dedicated to this, folks. I just really like the way that looks. I love a natural brow, because you get a texture with the brow that you can't get with makeup. I could call this part 50 shades of brown. I use about four or five different types of natural browns before I go with any of the fun colors, because I'm building up a foundation for the eyes. And just using a soft crease brush, I'm just going back and forth and really creating depth inside of my crease. All right, going above it with a light tan. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of black to base it, slowly moving it toward the front. I learned from a friend is you tilt your head like this and then the fallout falls to the side. I used to be really, really afraid of wearing colors in my face and now, ever since being on Drag Race, I just can't stop. I feel like I overdo it with the colors now. I just love playing around with pinks and magentas and things that I've been told are naturally suited for my skin types or my skin tone. I just decided, screw that, wear whatever I want. Taking some pink and just rubbing that into the crease area. And what I'm doing here is I'm keeping it very, very sharp here on the bottom. And we're gonna redefine that later. Because whatever you do here, you can always clean up with another product. That's the fun part about drag is it's usually never the same way every single time. Do some violet. I stick to a formula of darks on the bottom, lights on top, 
and then go through with my blush and just blend that out and then go through with a deeper color to clean it up. It's not really easy. It's all a lot of experimentation. Take our light and just tap it here. I'm using a lighter pink eyeshadow. Light, very, very light. And with this, I'm going to clean up the crease area and create a nice sharp line with the crease. And then taking an eyebrow pencil, I'm going to just draw a small line to sharpen it more. And I use like a nice deep chocolate color for a brow pencil, very, very thin. And what this is, is it's creating like that fold in the crease where it looks like it's natural skin hanging there. It's sort of the fool the eye into thinking that's where your eye fold actually is. Now my last step for my eyes is a little weird. I take a glow that's normally for the skin. These kind of fun purpley glows lighter complexions can use, but I found they make a really great eyeshadow because for me it doesn't work anywhere else. Taking that and just tapping it on. With glows, you wanna just press it. I usually do mine right here in the center of the eye. And then using a separate color, I wanna open the eye up more, so another glow, I put it right here, and that's going to add an openness to the face. See that? Let's move on to our eyeliner. For my eye type, I can't do just a general line here, otherwise I'll have like a weird Cleopatra, Elizabeth Taylor thing going on. So what I do for me, since my eyes are a bit hooded, I angle it here and bring it down. And then from there, it's like you're drawing an arrowhead on your eye. I used to use liquid in the past, and I feel like the liquid kind of crumbles up after a period of time. My face kind of eats it away, whereas this stuff really holds on my skin tight. Let's take a smaller brush and really detail that out, just refining it even more to sharpen it. When I was starting out, I loved the way Trixie did her makeup. And you take little things here and there, like I picked up on that trick of how she does her eyeliner, which I feel like is a very popular trend now with drag queens. It's one of the few ones I picked up where this nice, bold, triangular eyeliner really helps create a nice, interesting, stark look on the eye. And it really helps to break up eyeshadow. Like you notice the eyeshadow looks way more clean and sleek now. It has that line there. I'm gonna take an auburn brown pomade And starting from front of my eyebrow, I'm just going to start filling that in. And I'm just drawing it up a little higher. And I like to angle it just the tiniest bit for the tail. Bring it in, and that's going to give us that nice social media eyebrow. It's a good thing to remember about eyebrows is that I like to say they're cousins, not sisters. And if they are sisters, usually one of them's Julia Lewis. What I'm doing here is I'm adding a bit of depth to the brows, essentially drawing on little small hairs. Cause yeah, you generally want eyebrows that say I want Snow White dead. Yeah, there we go. I've achieved that. Taking a white pencil and I'm gonna do the waterline. I feel like I got this from watching Bianca Del Rio. I love that white underneath the eye to open it up. Now I'm gonna underline underneath the eye. This is a trick that Marilyn Monroe's makeup artist used to do. And what it does is it creates a shadow from the lashes. So that when you have your eyelashes on, your lashes look fuller. I feel like I'm just about perfect. So I'm gonna move on to the lips. Why I love doing this is because it's the same every single time. And it's the one part of my makeup I can always say Nothing changes about it. I do the simplest lip in the world. I like to say I put my lips on upside down. I don't do a bow. I just do a roundness here, a round circle. I'm using a pink lip liner. And the reason why I do this is mostly an aesthetics choice. I just like the roundness of that and the pout you get. But I already have full lips, so I really don't have to exaggerate that much if I didn't want to. What I'm gonna do now is take a couple different shades of pink. I'm gonna start with a darker one. And from here, I'm going to do the corner. Darken the corner. 
I am old school. I love me a good old bullet lipstick because I feel like I just have that control over it as opposed to a liquid lip. I can't handle that brush. I just can't get a hold of it or a grip on it. I don't know what it is, I think it's just me. Plus, I just like that look of it. That old, like, old school Hollywood just globbing it on. Taking a brighter lipstick, I'm going to do the center of the lips. Time to glow up. I'm going to do a gold bronze mixed with a lighter champagne. And I'm going to take that and just pat it. There. And here. And just let those cook for a little bit. And do my blush. Taking a pink blush and just tapping it onto the cheek to add more color back to the face. And I'm doing a little bit here in the forehead to add a little bit more color there. And just sweep it. And blend out our highlight with the glow. And this is an important part to be cautious on as well too because if you mix your glow up too much, you're gonna glow up the entire face and that's gonna bring up too much texture in your skin. You generally want your glow to pop right here. What I like to do is extend my nostril length. So you can eyeliner black. I'm going to extend the length of my nostrils. The reason I do this is to give me that really extreme feminized nose. Taking a bit of another glow, this one's an eyeshadow, but I found that it works really, really well for my nose glow. Take some of that, tap it down, and we're going to highlight the bridge of the nose. This is actually just an eyeshadow, but I find it's really crap on the eyes, especially on me, but it works really, really well for a nose highlight. All right, now I'm going to do my final, final step, eyelashes. I am using what are called mini 301s. These ones are 62s. And I feel like the most interesting thing is to see every drag queen's way of putting on eyelashes because none of them are sanitary. And we're all probably gonna have styes and all sorts of eye problems by the time we're 60, but that's why we're doing this while we're young. And plant it on. Okay, let's mascara up. The important part of adding mascara is not only does it make your eyelashes more full, but it also darkens it up. Especially with drag makeup, you'll find that makeup will catch on the bottom of these things and this will mask a lot of that color that gets picked up. It's sort of like when you clean up your house, you put everything under the rug. And once your face is on, all you have to do is add a wig and a look. Well, this is the pink fantasy. Don't forget to follow me on social media, especially YouTube slash James Mansfield. <laughs> now, if you've heard some of these tips before, if you've seen my videos, this is a gift. I made it for you. Hey, squirrel friend. When one video ends, just open up another one. It's called binge viewing. Go ahead. I support you. 